So the other day I received a message from another professional on LinkedIn asking about my transition from a role in mechanical engineering to a role in data analytics, specifically right now as a data consultant. And me being a nice guy, I am, gave an adequate answer, but I felt I could have done more. So I thought about it. What is everything I wish I knew when I was trying to make this change? And lo and behold, this video is what I came up with. So here are 7.5 things I wish I knew when I was trying to make this transition, which not only should help you make this transition easier or even start, but definitely get you ahead of the crowd going forward with your journey into data analytics. You will stay in tutorial hell until you start building. So what does this mean? Let me explain. Many people, including myself, learn technical skills, hair being data analysis through courses and tutorials. Some paid, some free, where you sit down and consume more and more content in efforts to learn the relevant tools, skills, coding languages, etc. And this is a great place to start but the reality is that in many situations, over time you realize that you've done very little if any data cleaning, analysis, visualization without the guidance of the instructor. Or in some scenarios, they've set you tasks and maybe it's got to a stage of the course where they're trying to give you minimal assistance. But because of a blocker that you've hit in the road that you can't get past, you decide to quit the course and go into a new one. Same thing happens again, you go to a new one. Same thing happens again, you go to a new one. You get the case. And in both scenarios, this is a slippery road. And this is what leads to being in tutorial hell. What makes matters worse is that in both scenarios, they give you a false perception of progress. In scenario one, you are working on these tasks, small projects, even coding exercises, completing them, but without the help and guidance of an instructor, you won't be able to do these things. And there's a problem because there's only a certain height or limit you can get to by working through projects, situations, exercises with help. It's better to get to a situation where you're doing these by yourself and going through those trials, going through those tribulations so that you have to really start problem solving, start getting ideas from the internet. So whether that's going on Stack Overflow, going on to using ChatGPT, getting their logic, not just getting the answer, but getting their logic and restructuring that logic to make sense for your problem. And this is where you see real growth and where you really learn. And in scenario two, you're jumping from course to course. Course one, maybe you completed 30%, course two, 35%, course three, 40%, just to make it, you know, sequential. Now, you would believe that because you've completed all these different percentages, maybe they add up, you've completed 100%. But in reality, the way that most courses are structured, the content is fairly similar. So in course one, where you've got into maybe basic SQL, course two, where you've got into 35%, maybe just a bit more than basic SQL. Course three, maybe intermediate SQL, just for the sake of this conversation or this scenario. You haven't actually learned much more then if you just completed one course, which gave you understanding of all the different tool sets, all the different coding languages, etc., skills, and then started building your own projects, started working independently on your own coding exercises. As an aspiring data analyst, you wanna be working on as much real world data as possible. You wanna be working towards professionally recognized certifications. And if possible, you wanna be applying what you're learning to work or other areas of your life. And I know it might be hard to do in some situations, but it could be as simple as using Excel more to going as far as implementing Python, using relevant libraries like Matplotlib, NumPy, Pandas to let's do manipulation, analysis and visualization on CSV files. Number two, learn Python specifically for data analysis. Anything else is a bonus. You see, I am by no means a Python expert. And that's simply because I just don't have to be. Fortunately, or let's call it fortunate, data analysts don't actually have to know all the intricacies. So let's say at the advanced level for Python. So this is creating objects as Python can be used as an object oriented language, but more so for data analysis being more used as a functional programming language. So this is understanding the basics of variables, loops, operators, data types, etc. Additionally, you will need to learn the relevant 
Python data science libraries to of course do data analysis as an overall topic. So learning their relevant use cases and of course their functions. So for data manipulation, analysis, cleaning, using pandas to create additional arrays that won't be found in pandas and of course doing additional mathematical operations using NumPy and then to visualize your data and of course your analysis using matplotlib. This would have been the perfect guide I needed when I was first learning instead of thinking that I need to know Python to the level of web development and knowing all the intricacies of object-oriented programming so that I can create apps which just isn't needed although can provide some benefits when dealing with very very complex data science projects artificial intelligence now once you cover the fundamentals you can now start to learn additional data related libraries so example beautiful soup to scrape data from websites seaborn to create more aesthetically pleasing visuals in comparison to matplotlib and a library that i used when me and a friend were trying to create a personal project to stream live cryptocurrency data in efforts to do technical sentiment and fundamental analysis of the market as an app which i'll be honest with you i didn't get that far with but the library in question was websockets which would grab data from an Binance API, stream it so that we can create these visualizations. So essentially what I'm trying to say is that there's many things you can do, even way more than what I've mentioned, but just cover the basics first. Learn Python for data analysis. Go one step further, even go into maybe machine learning if you want to, so TensorFlow, scikit-learn. Go crazy, but learn the fundamentals first. Number three, learn to like meetings. You're gonna to need to sit in on many of them. I didn't used to drink much coffee, but sometimes I find myself now needing to drink a morning coffee and an afternoon coffee just to stay in point during the meetings. And your question might be, so why do you have to be in so many meetings? And it ranges. It's a plethora of items. Sometimes this can be data discovery. So this can involve speaking to subject matter experts, owners and stewards about the data. So getting the subject matter expertise on the data, where the data is even held, for example, within databases. Where is that? It could be presenting your project recommendations, your findings. It could be speaking about errors in reports and dashboards. It can even be about handing over the project at the end. The list goes on. Also, as you get more senior, you're gonna to need to play a more facilitating role in these meetings. So having to navigate everything that's going on and even moving away from the technical work. So more coffee clearly. Mm. God damn, Jimmy. But jokes aside, this is why communication is so important as a data analyst, as you need to ask the right questions to of course, understand the scope of the project to the more granular detail of the deliverables or better yet, the requirements of the dashboard report that you need to create. So overall, I just want you to know, you're gonna be in a load of meetings, so you need to get used to it. Number four, the internet is your best friend, use it. I used to think there was an expectation to know everything off the top of your head, and because of this being my train of thought, I used to portray myself in this way. The smartest mammal in the galaxy. But this was onto a certain project where I was required to create a Power BI dashboard which would contain quite intricate visualizations. And because of this, we would require a higher level or more advanced level of DAX. DAX being the underlying language used in Power BI. So the functional query language used. I was fortunate that even though I didn't have the expertise at the time, I was working with someone quite senior, so he'd be able to provide me with the assistance that I needed. But what was very surprising to me is one of the problems I faced, I asked for assistance and he wasn't sure about the answer, but said he'll be able to get back to me shortly, which he did within like five or 10 minutes. When he provided me with the answer and the logic, I was very thankful for it. But what was more interesting to me was the question he asked next, which was, Charles, did you even use the internet? I found this kind of cheeky, but also interesting because I did use the internet to try to find the answer using some advanced DAX tutorial that I was looking at, but wasn't helpful. But because I was trying to portray myself in a certain way, he said no. But what was, I guess, the interesting part or the takeaway from this was that he said to me, well, going forward, I would recommend highly that you use the internet. And that's what really showcased to me the difference between us. Not that he had years of experience, but the years of experience 
made him understand that using the internet is what you're supposed to do. It's to your benefit. You're supposed to use it to gain new ideas, new solutions that you can apply to your problems. This can be in many different forums, Power BI dedicated ones, SQL dedicated ones, Stack Overflow, and even currently right now, using tools like ChatGPT, Bard, to help you understand things, maybe even sometimes do your analysis, which you should definitely check through. But overall, the takeaway is use the internet. It's your best friend and can definitely provide you with solutions and help you grow as a data analyst. Number five. Excel is more important than you think. Excel gets shown a lot as a data analysis tool and I kind of get it. It's not sexy in comparison to the other tools, but it is massively important. You see, earlier I started referring to a topic called data discovery. And within this, for some projects, you're going to also need to do a data maturity test for different companies and organizations. This being their readiness and ability to use data, which a lot of the time you actually can find is quite low meaning that they use spreadsheets and CSV files to store and manage vast amounts of data. Because of this, you can be sent multiple CSV files, spreadsheets to do your analysis, to do your work that's required of you for your project in question. And of course, there's an argument to say that this can be done in Python. But what I found in my personal experience sometimes is that clients actually want this provided to them in Excel because this is what they're familiar with, this is what they're comfortable in, and this is what they want to see provided to them as the end output. And you gotta do what the client wants them to do. So with that being said, don't be surprised on how much you actually have to use Excel. So don't shun it, actually learn how to use it. And yeah, when <laughs> you don't have to use it, of course, do what you need to do. Documentation might be boring, but it needs to be done. I'll keep this one short and sweet. Add comments and notes to your work because it helps you understand your own workflow when you come back to look at it over time, which might be a requirement because the client's requesting an update, a change, whatever it may be. You may even be working on multiple projects. So going from one to another to another, you may be, you know, headstrong about one. You forget about the analysis you've done on another one, the code you've written. You need to make it easy for you to just jump back on track on what you're working on when you're working on multiple things. Add comments, add notes. It makes everybody's life easier. Even when you're handing your work over to another person, they can pick up from where you left off. Same way if someone else does it to you and you, you get their work. It makes your life easier as well. Add comments and notes. It's a lifesaver. The internet is also where you'll find data sets to start your practice. One of the tried and tested routes to getting a data analysis job is by creating a personal portfolio filled with a diverse range of data projects. But where do you get the data sets from? One place I actually recommended in the past is Kaggle. Another place is GitHub, where you can actually host your personal portfolio. The final one being 538, all being great places to get a diverse range of data sets so you can stay having fun, quote unquote fun, while creating these projects, of course, to finally land you the job you deserve. Your mindset is core to be a successful data analyst. Some key traits that all start from the mind for data analysts, data analysts, I knew I was gonna mess up once, is that they don't stop learning. They focus on more than just the technical elements of the role and they never neglect design. But I think this requires this own dedicated video and luckily for you i have you on that front so there should be a video here on the screen around that topic of course if this video brought you any value at all then definitely like subscribe comment show me some love and until next time take care stay blessed and peace change will be televised